Isn't it interesting that when a woman realizes that she has just made her life different by openly learning that she is the legal heir of someone, that she decides not to go in to help someone so she can get there when it's too late. By getting there too late, it means she inherits, doesn't it? It means that she, in her lie, can pretend that she is not in love with a guy, but she can continue to fuck someone who looks like a Ken doll. But the reality is that the siblings also lie. And the siblings lie about their rights to man's property, and the siblings lie about the rights to a man's body, and the siblings lie about the rights to records, and siblings just lie. They lie so much that God is offended, they lie so much that COVID has come and not ended, and they lie so much because these little shits who drive their marvelous old cars because they're either, either too wise or too lazy to buy something more efficient allow a derelict in the shop. The immaturity and unbelievable behavior of some of these hourly employees is off the charts. And yet every day you're wondering why you can't hire people, and there's two reasons for that. They walk in and they meet your employees and they don't want to work with that. I'm literally a guy who watched a young man who clearly is just a touch overweight but clearly has sort of a gentle gait about him get laughed at because he changed his hair color back to match his license, I would presume. He had blonde hair, probably starting to think that if this is the age I can do that, but then he might have decisioned, made a decision to make a wise decision that in order for him to get better employment, he shouldn't do that. Or maybe his manager suggested he change himself back, but my guess is he's one of the players in an electronic game in his mind that I can do anything I like to anyone at any time. I don't have to treat them with dignity. I don't have to offer them any help. I can interfere all day long with what someone posts online, and I can do it because I'm myself. But the bottom line is you're not doing your job. The bottom line is you are working on someone's paycheck, working on a corporate budget for the accounting of employees, and you're not performing in a way that doesn't make you look anything but odd. You see, most companies have standards about where men can smoke. Usually it's behind a building or out in a vehicle so that you don't embarrass a company. Now some companies are relaxing their principles and some companies don't mind that your employees smell like all sorts of things that they toke and they smoke. But most people feel that anyone who's involved with molestation or abuse or verbal assault don't deserve to have jobs at all. You see, a homeless person didn't get homeless by himself is not true. But some homeless people do get there without help from siblings or you. Meaning that siblings attack a, attack a family member so that they can have more inheritance and siblings lie to police so that they can ruin records, and siblings steal clothing so they can destroy it. But if you're interacting with those siblings thinking you're going to make some difference in someone's life, you're not, because you're not Jesus Christ, and you are not a part of a person's life. And your two seconds of interactions each day doesn't make you anything more than you are an employee in an hourly wage. In America, we have the right to pursue higher education. In America, we have a right to pursue some sort of elevation. In America, we have the right to not be harassed on a sidewalk. And in America, we have the right to lay ourselves down if we're tired and not be abused. In America, we have the right to personal safety. And in America, we have the right to professional security. What I mean by that is that there's always some fellow there's always some woman that think they have more rights to you than they should. They overstep their boundaries, they're not a part of your family, you would never choose them to be that, and they just think, I'm in charge of you, and I'm going to do that because I've got free time, free situations in front of me. If you're here in the parking lot with your car, if you've stepped into the door of your company, you are fully fledged an employee. So on the duty or off the duty, it's the same thing, motherfuckers. You are representative of a nationally traded corporation. And you don't have the right to use your personality or your communication style to humiliate or to 
harass anybody who's struggling in poverty. But there is a difference in the players. There's most likely a difference in their attitude. There's definitely a difference in what they'll tolerate. And there's a difference for you. But if your employees start harassing and pushing people out in discrimination, I promise you, you're going to get the response that's sort of over the top from the black community who didn't like an attitude of one of your employees or who didn't like the attitude of a 20-year-old talking to a 50-year-old man as if he didn't have the right to communicate his concerns about your Wi-Fi network and the things that ugly law enforcement do. But when every fucking car in your little bitty inheritance parking lot, and I hate to call it like that, has a blue line upon it or some Navy flag on it or some military bullshit with it, you better believe people will take notice. You can wave your little flag all you want to, but make sure your flag is representing you. Because when you walk down the street and harass people, when you hide in a shop and piss on people, when you interfere with their lawful rights to create content on their business website, you do you. But the reporting that I do is about the abuse that I endure every single day from American citizens and not who think they have the right to win the day over a total stranger's life.